Hey everyone, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. We're going to take a break from the work on the Mun Space Station and we're going to launch some infrastructure stuff that we're going to need for future missions. Uh, I, I want to launch a solar probe, I want to launch missions to Duna of course, and right now we only have communications range with remote tech within the actual Kerbin system, the Mun, Minmus, so forth. So I want to get a deep space relay up, probably three of them actually. Um, in relatively, you know, one-third orbits. That way we can keep everything kind of, you know, in contact deeper out. Now, we're going to be using these st these satellites, which should be able to communicate anywhere we need to, mainly because we're going to be going to the sun with a probe at some point very soon. I have the probe designed. I really want to get it done, but I need to be able to actually communicate with that probe. These solar panels are really cool. They're from the from the Cosmos Station Pack, I believe. I really like them. Um, this is basically just a bunch of batteries, and some ion engines, so that it can adjust its orbit, and then a kind of unwieldy rocket that I had to design, because basically uh, there wasn't a very good way to get this down to a tricoupler and and make it work. I probably could have if I fiddled with it more, but this seemed reasonable. I didn't want to deal with uh, docking things together with this because this is going to be in a high orbit. I just want to be able to launch this thing as a single unit and this seemed like the easiest way to go. Now before I actually go any further here though, I do want to stabilize this a bit more I think. No, don't copy all that crap. I don't really care how pretty these struts look, it doesn't matter. There, that way I, I think that will keep it from flexing quite so much. There's docking ports on this thing, so if I ever want to refuel it or move it, if it runs out of uh, gas, I can send up a probe to do that, because I'd rather not have to launch these things more than I have to, especially because they're going to be integrated into the communications network, and it's going to be a pain because I'd have to re-aim satellites and stuff. So I'm just going to do it this way. I really don't know... Oh, I didn't put a mech jab on this. Did I? Yes, I did. Okay, I really don't know how good this is going to work, but um, we're going to hope for the best. I don't know what orbit I want for this either. Let's think about this. Um, I guess I could put it all the way out near Minmus somewhere. What, what? How high up is Minmus? What is Minmus's altitude compared to Kerbin? Alright, what if I went with like 50,000 or 50 million meters? I could relay signals that far. That shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, that looks like it ought to work, right? I don't know. Sure, we'll try it. So, how the 4,000, that would be like 50,000 kilometers, I guess. Let's go for a lower orbit first and we'll adjust it from there. So let's just go for, a, a, let's say... 10,000 kilometers. That makes sense to me. Make sure our staging makes some sort of logical sense here. It seems to. And that's all good. I have not tested this thing, so I really don't know how well it's going to fly. Seems pretty okay so far. I put a lot of solid rocket boosters on it because these big tanks are heavy. I have a feeling we're going to decelerate again once we ditch these socket solid rocket boosters. I'm hoping we'll have enough thrust out of everything to to make that work. I have these firing because I figured that you know they're exposed they might as well not be dead weight. There's no point in having them be dead weight as far as I'm concerned. Now there's no sepatrons on this thing so hopefully those nightly nicely drop off. These ones are spaced out so I never have problems those ones. Alright, so dropping, that went well. We didn't decelerate, good. That means we're going to be fine. Those engines are going to overheat though. Prevent overheat. Are you preventing an overheat? Okay, Mech Jeff's preventing the overheat, I think. Whew, that was a little scary. I've never had to actually use the prevent overheat thing and have it actually do anything, but it seems to work. So once we get in this lower orbit, um, 
Well, actually, just basically once we get out of the atmosphere, I'm going to aim at least one of these dishes at Kerbin, just to be sure that we don't lose contact with this thing. Seems to be working pretty well. Look at us. That thing's like rock steady. I strutted it a lot, so I was hoping that it would be. I just realized I didn't strut these engines together at that not at all. That might be a little bit of an issue once this separates. The separation's a little bit worrying because I didn't put separatrons on and I'm kind of worried it's going to slide and hit this, but we're going to be at a pretty good altitude so the atmosphere shouldn't really be a factor. I'm hoping they'll just kind of fall back. It's looking good. That's just the next, the last little hurdle to get over really there. Should be done in a second here. Come on, fingers crossed. We're very high up, I think we'll be alright. Yep, look at that, that was beautiful. You do those in the atm- ooh, this is less beautiful. You do that in the atmosphere though, and things usually go kind of awry. It's, it's kind of beautiful in, its, in a way, look at it. But it's a little worrying. <laughs> oh no. Let's check how we're doing with our. Oh, is that getting worse? They are coming so close to colliding. Why, why, oh, why did I not strut those together? I just didn't think of it because of the other engines. That sucks. Anyway, what's happening here? It's mostly going to be ion powered, it looks like, because we're kind of kind of tearing through the fuel here. That was not a very efficient rocket design. I know I could have probably done better, but I just wanted to kind of brute force that, really. I hope we at least establish an orbit here. Yeah, we got a lot of fuel. We'll be all right. All right, so I'm going to be back once orbit is established. All right, now, things have settled down. We still haven't reached orbit, but things have settled down. It's not wobbling so much. I'm feeling a little bit better about this, but I do want to go ahead and activate these, at least, well, I'll probably activate a couple of these dishes. Let's go ahead and target Kerbin with this one. And then we will target, let's see here, we'll target the Mun with the next one and then Minmus with the last one. That way we should have a signal from somewhere in the system at any given time. I like how the newer remote tech dishes actually point to where the planet slash moon or whatever your target is. It actually points to it. That's much cooler. Much, much cooler. At least things flex in an even way and it doesn't actually seem to mess up the course. It's kind of weird, but it actually seems to be stable. <laughs> I just realized that this orbit might not be the best because I think we're going to have an encounter with the Mun eventually, but we're not going to right now. So what I'm going to end up doing is uh, I think we'll, once we get this orb orbit actually established here in a second, go ahead and widen this thing out to be, like I said originally, probably somewhere closer to out where Minmus is because this is a deep space relay after all, and it should be fine out there, I would think. This is going to end up being the furthest thing that I've sent from Kerbin so far once we get out there. We might be able to do most of this with just these nuclear... nuclear rockets. Nuclear... but no, nuclear rockets. Um, I think we can probably do a lot of that with that. Still have a pretty decent amount of fuel left and this orbit is established now. Right about. Yay! So I should probably deploy a solar panel or two. These are really cool solar panels, by the way. Look at this. I'm just going to deploy all of them, I guess. I think I have an action group set up, but I don't want to accidentally 
decouple something, <laughs> so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna bother with the action group. All right, this thing's looking pretty badass right now. I gotta say. Now it actually has enough solar power that with these dishes, without, I could probably have some of the dishes activated, but without all the dishes activated, this thing actually has enough power that I can use the ion engines indefinitely, at least when I tested it on the launch pad. Why are you blocked by? So, uh, I don't even know where the sun is. The light is coming from down there. Okay. That makes sense. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out what's going on here. Now, I don't know if we're going to get grabbed by the Mun or not, but I'd really rather not find out. So, let's just go increase this to... What did I say that Minmus was at? We want to be past Minmus, but it's not going to take much to be out of its sphere of influence. So I want like 48,000. That would still be within... Well, actually, I... Yeah, we'll go with 48,000. trying to think. Because um, every so often we'll be in range of these relays that would be able to boost us a little bit further. But if we're on the opposite side of the orbit, that probably won't really work. So it's probably best to do it that way, I think. Alright, so we have finished establishing our orbit. I don't think we're going to have... I actually went out to 50,000 or, you know, 50 million meters. Um, I don't think we're going to have any problems with Minmus here. This should be well outside of its sphere of influence, I would imagine. So, I think I think we're feeling pretty good about this. And it looks like... Uh, I forgot to say, like, those actually boost up my range by... A little bit there because they're at like two million meters themselves or two million yeah two million meters so that actually boosts up my range a little bit so these should be fine at this range here and uh, everything's pretty much active here now how do I want to move away from these rockets though I don't really want them to be adrift in my same orbit I guess I can use the ion engines and we'll adjust down to a perfect 50 million and these can just drift up here because I don't really care about debris in like upper upper parts of our orbit. It's just down here really. So let's go ahead and get rid of this stuff. There we go. Now which group activates my engines? Is it one? Yep, it's group one. I'm just going to ever so slightly push away here. And like I said, on the launch pad at least, these solar panels were enough that I could use the ion engine as much as I wanted. Now, of course, they're going to end up being obscured at some time, so I probably won't be able to do that all the time, but it'll be good enough. So let's get rid of all this crap, because we don't need it. We're doing some manual stuff from here and what do I want to do here I want to just burn retrograde right now I'm not going to wait turn on the fine controls oh I should actually make sure that the solar panels aren't going to hit that okay they won't just being safe here <laughs> So I'll, I'll launch two more of these at some point, but I'm going to do those off camera just because it's going to be exactly the same as this and, you know, why show the same thing three times? So we should be able to point one of these dishes out to the outer part of the solar system for Duna and then to the others for the inner. That looks pretty good to me. Now, just trying to decide if it's safe to burn. It doesn't look particularly safe to burn. Let's go out. It's going to go off my mark just a little bit. We'll fix it in a second. But Just want to make sure we clear this stuff. Now these things are these ion engines are gonna take a while to move something this big, obviously. But yeah, see our solar charge is doing just fine. Let's go full throttle. 
And yep, our electric charge is a-okay. Alright, so that should be enough to nudge us off of that. Let's turn this off. And swing over. This thing actually handles really nice out here. I thought it was going to be slow turning and stuff, but this is actually pretty nice. And that debris gets to spend its whole life out here together. That's nice, at least they're not alone. They got friends. Alright, so what are we doing this side here? Oh crap, we went too far. Oh crap. I wasn't really paying attention because I was all focused on that debris. And I didn't bother putting any RCS on this, it's just a waste to put RCS on stuff like this because, you you know, the maneuvers that we're doing out here are so incredibly, like, we have a long lead time, there's no reason to worry about it. Right, so let's bring that up to about as exact as I can get it. That's pretty good. So I just gotta go warp around to the other side and then we can uh then we can finish this orbit up. Alright, that's a problem. When the Mun gets out of range, we actually do lose range of uh of the planet, but it should be fixable just by activating one of these longer range dishes here. Let's go ahead and target Kerbin. That should work no matter what, because that's that's supposed to have a range out to Duna, so that should be fine. And is it fine? No, we went out of contact. It's because there's no dish out there that can do that. Uh, I can use my space station to do that, probably. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit of a problem because my burn is coming up right here. Didn't really think that part through so much. Uh, t -t -t -t. Let's go ahead and just save here. And let's select the space station. And I should be able to target that probe here. Uh, let's see here. Progress station, where are you? There you are. I'm going to be launching a, a couple of new modules up to the space station pretty soon and I actually decided I'm going to build a fuel depot as well because uh, it, it kind of lags things out more than I'd like and if I'm going to be building ships in orbit I'm going to need like a dedicated thing to do that with. So let's go ahead and activate this dish and we shall target. Does it just show my vessel here? Yeah it does. Now that should work, right? One would think. Although I don't know how a line of sight's gonna work with that either. I'm gonna have to work the bugs out of the system, I suppose. Well, it won't matter once I get another one up, because one of the uh, once I get the other three up, because one of them will always be in range of the mun, I would think. So that won't be a problem. Yeah, we're out of control still. Well, I'm not pointing the dish at that, actually. But I can't point the dish at the station right now, either. Well, let's just warp around until we come back into control here, I guess. It's all a learning experience, you know? I haven't really messed around too much with the remote tech stuff. It's only been on screen here, really. Alright, so we're in range now. Let's go ahead and change the target of this one to Progress Station. Where are you, Progress Station? There you are. Now, will this work? What happens when the station goes around the far side of the planet? 
It doesn't seem to actually care about that. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Well, I guess because technically you can relay crap or I don't know. Whatever, I'll take it. Let's get ready for our burn here then. Oh, and of course we're going to be out of contact when the burn... Oh, maybe we'll be in contact. It's making up its mind. And out of contact again. Well, this is going to be dangerous because if I go out of contact while the, uh, the burn's going on, that's going to be a little bit of a problem. That is definitely going to be a little bit of a problem. Well, let's just wait and see. Like I said, when I have a third one up, I think that will always be in range of the Mun with this, so it won't matter. It's just always a little dicey getting this stuff established for the first time. So I'm going to have to lead my, uh, my burn just a little bit here in a weird fashion, too. Because of the signal delay. And also, I'm a little past my, uh... My periapsis, so I'm losing altitude, which means I'll have to burn a little bit once we get up to the apoapsis again. Because this does need to be sort of perfect. I mean, within a few thousand meters so that the satellites stay relative to each other. I mean, as long as the air is built in about the same, it doesn't really matter. And... I'm going to call it good enough. Because I'm kind of pushing my luck for staying in the burn window here let's go ahead and go all the way around to apoapsis again damn it I went past it now I'm out of yeah I'm gonna wait till the other satellites get up here to do that so I'm gonna go ahead and put the other satellites up here on my own it's gonna take a little bit because I'm gonna have to establish phasing orbits and stuff and it's gonna be boring so I'm not gonna include all that you've seen it before and uh, I'll be back in a little bit alright so we have finally launched the third one of these I ended up boosting their orbits up to about 80,000 kilometers or 80 million meters so they're in a rough triangle here um, we got a good signal relay going I ended up actually switching some stuff on the space station I'll show you in a second but uh, I really should have put uh, more of these dishes and none of these dishes on because these littler dishes are no good out here. Um, this is, like I said, 80,000 uh, 80, kilometers, which is almost to the edge of the sphere of influence of Kerbin. I think that's like 82 or 85 or something. So these are by far the furthest things man-made or artificial out here orbiting Kerbin right now. See how tiny Kerbin is. And... Is that the Mun? I think that's the Mun over there too. But, uh, yeah, that, that's about it. These things are just going to be out here. We'll target one of the dishes at the sun for a, a mission that I have coming up in the future. The other one we can probably just target um, out to Duna or something in the future. But we don't need to deal with that right now. I guess I should show you back at the Space Center the other thing that I have going here. Now, let's see, where's Progress Station? I always lose Progress Station and all this. Well, let's just use this filtering for once here. There we go. I did a little bit of uh, tidying up on the space station here. I've removed some of the old components and swapped in some new ones. Mainly what I did is I just replaced this little array here with the newer dishes. It's got three of them now. One of these is pointing at each of those relay satellites so that that will work. I also replaced this docking array with a smaller one that because I didn't really need the extra RCS fuel and I figured that would take up a little bit more space and give more room for ships to dock here. So uh, yeah that's really going to about do it for today. I do want to thank you for watching and I will catch you next time guys.